Heavenly Father, dear God. Heavenly Father, dear God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, be with us today. We thank you for another opportunity to speak and teach you, preach your word, Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Lord. Give us strength right now in the name of Jesus. Touch this mortal body one more time in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're back. We're back again here at Unity NBC here on our YouTube channel. And thank you for joining us. If you've never been here before, hit that subscribe button. Let others know uh, that you're listening to the Word of God here at Unity NBC. If you've uh, been with us before, continue to like us, continue to work with us as we stand and tell the world that Jesus is real, that he's the only answer for this generation. I do mean the only answer for this generation. If you'll just hold a second, I'm going to change mics. Maybe I get a better, less reverb here on this microphone. We left you in the book of Romans. Romans, pro-Romanos. The book of Romans, the 13th chapter. The 13th chapter of the book of Romans. We left you here. Somewhere in the verse 8 and 9, where the last time we mentioned verse 8 and 9, we told you, pay your bills. Oh, no man, nothing. That's what the Bible says in verse 8. Oh, no one, anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Then we went to verse 9, where it tells you, do not commit adultery. Do not murder anyone. You shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment are summed up in this saying, namely, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And since the um, we went here the last time, a friend of mine's store was brutally robbed. It was people just went in and broke in and, and did uh, damage and stole things. Here it is, brothers and sisters. If you're accidentally watching this, do not steal. If anybody compels you to go steal, leave them alone. You don't want to steal. It is going against the law of God, going against what God has said. Way back in the Torah, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And here it is. I've, had, I've been broke before. I remember when my children were small, I worked three jobs and was almost killed driving a, a truck coming home, coming back from one of the jobs, uh, and it was hard. But here it is. I never was forced to have to steal from anybody. So I'm here to tell you today, do not steal. Girls, young women, if you get got a guy and he's a thief, leave him alone. Or you'll be going down and putting money on his books or wasting a whole lot of your youth and time on a thief. Stay away from thieves. The Bible says, God's word says, you shall not steal. Some of you mothers that sit around upholding these young men and women and this foolishness, shame on you as well. God is going to deal with you as well. Do be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For that what a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We're not supposed to steal. I didn't mean to go on that rant, but I just have to say that. Maybe somebody will listen and will hear them. So now, as the end of it, it says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 9, which comes from uh, Mark, the 12th chapter, verse, uh, verses 29 and 30, 31, where Jesus says, you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And if the next commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, which he was repeating the Torah that Moses put in place Back in uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verse four, Shema, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and you shall follow the Lord, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. And we here it is, brothers and sisters. That's how we are to care about one another. Now we take it a first a step further today and go into verse ten, and we're only going to go into verse ten. Verse ten says, "Love does no." harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of 
the law. So we're going to use for a subject staying within the confines of Romans, the 13th chapter, verse 10. Love does no harm. Let me say that one more time. Love does no harm. For somebody that's hard-headed out there, love does no harm. Here we have, uh, in the middle of this 13th chapter, uh, we have an oath that appears somewhat out of nowhere, but, but, but here it is. Uh, an oath is when somebody makes a pledge, a, a pledge that they are going to stay within the confines of that pledge, and they're not going to go sideways, they're not going to go up or down, they're going to stay within that pledge. Oh, my God, when I accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life, I was uh, then going to follow the Lord forever. I listened to Dr. Charles Stanley today talk about a lot of problems with a lot of people. We're busy worshiping ourselves instead of worshiping God. We live in a, a time, a lot of our young people especially, they're worshiping all types of things out there and they don't realize that death is just right around the corner. If you're listening to me today, find Jesus. You're going to say, oh, preacher, I don't have to listen to you. I'm 25 years old. Oh, oh, preacher, I'm 35 years old. I don't have to listen to you. Oh, oh, preacher, I'm 45 years old. I don't have to listen to you. Oh, but let me tell you something. To boast not thyself on tomorrow. But tomorrow is not promised to me. It's not. It is not. It's not promised to me. It's not promised to anybody. So if you're here, I don't care if you're 15 years old, if you're 25 years old, if you're 35 years old, if you're 45 years old, if you're 55 years old, find Jesus before it's everlasting to late. Make him the Lord and Savior of your life. So we have here Paul puts out something and it's, 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 it's an oath. It's a specifically an oath. Let's read verse 10 from a couple of other versions of the Bible. No one who loves others will harm them. So love is all that love demands. Excuse me, that the law demands. Another version says, love works no ill to its neighbor. Love, therefore, is the whole law. Meaning we gotta love your neighbors. There's no accident between verse, the end of verse nine, and as we go into verse uh, 10, there's no accident there that it says to love thy neighbors thyself, and then it says love does no harm. Ooh, that's a lot there. Let's read it from another version of the Bible. If you love other people, you will never do anything bad to them. Do you hear what I just said? If you love someone, if you love other people, you will never do anything bad to them. So anyone who loves other people has obeyed God's law completely. And we're not supposed to do bad things. Now, here, let me say something, especially to you church people. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm not talking about people that don't go to church. I'm talking about you people that go to church and pretend to be gigantic Christians. If you don't love one another, if you don't care about one another, if you don't go out of your way for, for them, if you do anything to harm them, you are standing in direct violation to God Almighty. This is what I'm saying to you, because I've been in church all my life. I didn't just come in church after being on a drunk somewhere, and oh, I decided this is what I'm gonna do. No, I've been in church all my life. And here it is, I've seen people, in some cases, irrevocably harm other people in church to the point where some people left the church and never came back because of something somebody said, because of something someone did, because somebody putting their name in a lie, about somebody putting their name in something crazy, of putting them in a rumor, saying something bad about them, accusing them. We've done, I've seen people do horrible things to other people in the church. You're gonna answer to God for that one day. I know I'm not a popular preacher, but I'm trying to help you. If, if you're that way, learn to repent. Learn to love 
people. I've seen people that get, I've seen women talking about other women because they were heavy. I've seen them talking about other women because they were cute. I've seen other men talk about other men because he had a better looking wife. I've seen people talk about other people because that, that woman, her husband made more money than this other woman's husband. They were more successful. People talk about each other for all kinds of reasons. And here is a lot of times the people that talk about other people in church need to be talked about themselves because they're not all that or a bag of chips or a strawberry soda. Here it is. We're all God's children. We're only here for a short period of time. Don't talk about each other. Don't tear each other up. Don't castigate, masticate where we take, that's, that's, that's a form of chewing and chewing something to the excess in our mouth. What you do is love on people. Love on people. Let me say that one more time. Say it, Tillman Jr. Love on people. That's what we are to do if we are true children of God. Let's read that 10th verse from another version of the Bible where it says, love cannot result in any harm to the neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Here it is again. Love cannot result in any harm, meaning any harm. What type of harm, preacher? Any harm to another human being, to another person. Hallelujah. Let's read it from another version of the Bible. Love never hurts, does wrong or evil to a neighbor. Love never hurts, harms, do wrong, evil to any neighbor. So loving is obeying all fulfillment of the law. I'm even going to read to you from the King James Version. What the King James Version says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And we've got to get that in our heads, this harming people, this doing wrong to people. The wrong is kakos, which also is it blends into a harm. We should get that completely out of our systems, completely out of our minds. We should want to love and care about one another. We're all part of God's family. We're God's children. We shouldn't want to hurt or harm anybody. It's the same analogy with your, with your family. If you've got somebody in your family, you've got brothers and sisters, you shouldn't want to do harm to them. If you've got cousins, you shouldn't want to do harm to them. If you've got God brothers and God sisters, you shouldn't want to do harm to them. We should want to love, agape love, chest love with one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 18. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because the Bible says, I am the Lord. Leviticus 19, 18. Galatians 5, 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's Galatians 5, 14. So here we have Paul taking this oath in the middle of his text. And here it is. One of the, one of the oaths that usually, that actually takes this same phrase is used in the medical field, the Hippocratic Oath, AD 245. First, do no harm. Promium non nocere. First, do no harm. Premium non nocere. First, do no harm. That means whoever you deal with in the church, before you say one word to them, remember, first do no harm. First do no harm. That means you got to love them. You don't, you don't do anything to hurt them or to cause them to leave church. Do no harm. I've seen people uh, create ruckuses in church. I've seen people talk about the pastor like a dog. I've seen people cause major problems. Sorry, if you're going to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, if you're going to be a true baptized.
baptized, Holy Ghost filled believer in Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus Christ yesterday, the same as yesterday, today, and forever, do no harm. If it's another ministry across town and you don't care for that ministry, first, do no harm. Don't, don't try to tear another church up because you don't like somebody in that church. Excuse me. First, do no harm. So this, this Hippocratic oath that, 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 that was started, and you have other people, yeah, give you an example. The dentist take a similar oath. Nurses take something called the Nightingale Oath. An oath is, I will never, ever, under any circumstances, harm or cause harm or participate in any circumstances that will cause harm. Let me repeat that to you one more time because you're getting ready to go call somebody and get into some mess or get into some Facebook and, and share them away and shine away and put something you want to put in something. Get ready to text or email somebody. Let me tell you something all the way to heaven one more time. An oath I will never ever under any circumstances harm or cause harm or participate in any circumstances that will cause another person harm. My brothers and sisters, we have to love one another. First John 4.19, we love because he is, he first loved us. James, the second chapter, verse 2 and 8, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. My brothers and sisters, just as I'm getting ready to go to my seat right now, if you're having trouble doing harm to somebody, if you're having trouble keeping yourself from doing harm, let me bring you back to the Romans, the first chapter, which it says, he, Paul, that was a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called out to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. And he promised throughout his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now here it is, verse 4, and declared to be the sons of God with power according to the spirit of holiness and the resurrection of the dead. Call on the power of holiness. Call on the power of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, and hold on to the resurrection from the dead and learn to love people with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that is, here, here it is, here that is, here that is the second of all commandments is to love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you love Jesus and you know that he died on the cross for you, he died on the cross, was taken off of that cross and put in a borrowed tomb, hallelujah, but rose on the third day morning with all power in his hands. Keep on following Jesus and do no harm. Keep on following Jesus and do no harm. Do no 